Yesterday, I drove six hours through this crazy storm on FSD Beta 12, and it just did phenomenally, even in some very, very low visibility. We're like, I can't even see the lane lines. And I'm like, where are we going? And the thing can somehow see the lane lines. So it's just a huge sort of security blanket. I didn't see the red hands issue until the very end of the drive when it got super, super severe. But um, overall, it did pretty good for that drive. So I was pretty impressed. There was also some debris that got knocked into the road due to the heavy winds, such as like uh, things falling off trees and stuff. And I did notice it actually tries to avoid debris if it can that's in the road, which is uh, kind of an interesting thing I hadn't seen before. Did you drive around in the rain at night? Yes, it was all um, about 50% day, 50% night. And um, it was very strong in the rain in the night. So it's not perfect. It does have that red hands uh, issue sometimes. The build still hasn't changed in that regard. But I've considered it to be very strong performance uh, considering. I mean, this was like such a bad storm that they sent an emergency alert to our for, uh, phone saying this is a life threatening, you know, storm. Don't go outside, which, you know, might be a little dramatic, but um you know, I, I found it pretty impressive that FSD 12 could function in that environment. And um, yeah, we, we are seeing a lot more work on um, actually smart summon. I did notice my car kind of like parking at the end of the drive a few times. I feel like that's kind of like maybe an issue or something, maybe like something slipped into the training set or something that they didn't intend. But we are seeing work in the Tesla app update on updates on actual smart summon. So that should return both dumb summon and smart summon to vision vehicles. It includes a stronger, you know, occupancy network. Uh, it's based on the V12 architecture. And that should hopefully be rolling out potentially with the first V12 build um, that goes to that goes to customers. I did also hear that apparently the recall issue has delayed. Uh, the rollout of V12 in that they can't send it out to more customers until they patch that icon size, believe it or not. That shouldn't take too long, though, right? That's a pretty easy merge. There should be minimal conflicts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. of course. The thing I was going to ask is, how much do you think Elon had to pay the, uh, you know, the people who control the weather so that they could test uh, rain in California? Yeah, I think... This is going to, uh, you know, I was just thinking when I was driving yesterday, this is going to be amazing for gathering data for the training set. Um, you know, really, really crazy weather. I mean, it's still raining right now. So, yeah, hopefully the auto wiper team and the FSD beta 12 team had a lot of triggers set for yesterday. And, um, you know, I think the whole world is really going to benefit. It finally rained in California. So auto wipers might now work for the whole world. And, you know, I had a, had a mixed results with auto wipers yesterday. It was uh, it was good on my first drive, which I recorded, which is pinned to my page right now. But later in the storm, you saw, especially in the very heavy rain, you, you know, it would often kind of not be enough. So I had to manually turn it up to the four, the highest speed setting and just keep it there and then turn it off. So still not perfect, especially like in those storms, you don't want auto wipers to be turning off or going slower than you need. But um, I think now that they've moved to an end to end architecture for training deep rain, it should be getting better a lot faster. So let's see what happens after this latest batch of training data came in. Big question for you guys. If you had to guess, what do you think? What part of the model or training set do you think they're working on right now to address the concerns and the issues that Omar has seen? If I was working on this space, the thing that I would do is I'd be building out a system to allow different mixture set creation. So you have a whole bunch of data sets, right? So they have the data set of good drivers that are quote unquote NHTSA drivers, let's say, that stop at stoplights. You have a data set of people who have driven a lot in the rain, data set of snow, various other things. You create various data sets based on known problem spaces by creating triggers to go sample data sets. For PII reasons, maybe you have to drop the video after a certain amount of time, GDPR and all that kind of stuff. So you have these triggers constantly resourcing more data. 
And then you create mixtures, which are basically going to say, what percentage of each of these data sets do you sample to create your training data while keeping your overall token count constant? That then lets you use the um, data sets in various different ways. After that framework has been built, I think the next thing they need to do is build out experimentation frameworks so that their data scientists can try different theories and try different things. And that's what they want to accelerate. So it's not necessarily the collection of the data I think that would be hard. I think that's pretty trivial. I think it's the experimentation framework. It's the uh, simulation data, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's probably where these cycles are going. I think people are going to be blown away. I'm very happy with FSD 12. There's a, you know, a few minor issues like uh, the red hands. Um, I think number one, they want to be massaging really the occupancy network data set. I mean, there is no occupancy network, but sort of the occupancy network that's internal to it. I would want to show it more examples of close up interactions, edge cases uh, revolving around those sort of close up interactions and really fine grained movements and um, really getting that internal occupancy network above the old occupancy network by just showing it more clips. And then, um, you know, rain and precipitation, I think that seems to be an issue where they're throwing up red hands. It seems to be speed limited more than the other version. I could be mistaken about that, but I feel that it's lowering the speed um, for weather more than it did with V11. That could be kind of a safety guardrail. So that's one thing I'd like to see improved as well as, you know, the red hands issue resolved. And then there's a couple of minor issues I saw in San Francisco, like the uh, stopping at the stop sign until the light turns green and stuff that I imagine will be pretty easy to fix um, in the next build or so. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what the delta is between this first V12 build and the second V12 build to really get a sense of what their capability is to improve this thing. And I mean, it's it's almost just really fucking good you know like it's you can you can just smell it where you're going to be doing most of your drives you know curb to curb without intervention it'll be able to go in the parking lot it'll be able to find a parking spot it'll be able to pull out like it's it's right there it's so close that you know we can touch it but um you know it may take uh a year or two to get to driverless level reliability. But in the interim, we're going to start actually experiencing these curb to curb, uh, very smooth drives, you know, parking lot to parking lot. And that's going to be a lot of fun, especially like actually smart summon. I'm super excited for that because even with the old smart summon, you try it in parking lots and people like freak out. They're like, Oh my God, that's so cool. There's no driver. And you know, when I'm in a Waymo, like you see people always taking pictures. Oh my God, no driver. So the no driver thing is really something that turns heads. And if you have like Teslas with FSD beta 12 actually navigating Costco parking lots and picking people up, that is going to be the biggest viral ad campaign for FSD we've ever seen. Before one last question to Omar on FSD, I just want to remind everybody to please go to YouTube and subscribe to my channel. If when I get to a thousand, I can add chapters to videos, which make it easier for people to watch. When I get to 500 subscribers, I can start doing live streams. Um, but I have to reach those milestones before those are possible. So if you could please go to the top of your pages, that pinned tweet at the top, follow the account, like and repost to spread the word. I would highly appreciate it. Uh, Omar, how is the parking when, when FSD completes the route and pulls up to the curb? What, what would you rank the performance from one to 10? Well, it doesn't really park. It kind of just pulls over. And I've seen it go into parking lots and just kind of pull over. So it's not like it's consistently parking every time. Like two times it kind of parked. And I use park loosely. I mean, it was between the lines of the parking spot and it kind of pulled over. But it was also kind of like, OK, did it just kind of turn or is it actually parking? Right. Like, it's not like it parked and then backed up and did that. So it's not not like really parking. It almost just kind of seems like in some videos in the training set, someone just parked after and it might have kind of picked up on that motion somehow or something. Um, but it's not really like the full fledged auto park feature that I think they're about to ship. 
Omar, would you say that it's pulling over for you to get out safely versus it's parking? Yeah, like, you know, so it can pull over to the side of the road, but it also seems to sometimes have this ability to kind of pull over in a perpen like it can pull over into a parking spot, if that makes any sense. Right. So yeah, it's kind of just programmed when you get there, pull over or not programmed, but that's just what it does. Well, let me see if I can ask a different way. Even if it blocks a driveway, even if it's not in a legitimate parking spot, is it pulling over in a place where you would want like an Uber driver to pull over? Yeah, exactly. The place where I would pull over. It looks for a little gap in the road and we'll kind of pull over there or else we'll just kind of go close to the parked cars. Right. And that is actually a feature that needs to be built, right, for RoboTaxi. You can't have RoboTaxi refusing to drop you off unless it finds a parking spot. So in that sense, is that comparable, better or worse than Waymo? I'd say it's better in a way. I mean, Waymo has been pulling over for a long time, obviously, but this is one of my biggest complaints about Waymo is how they sometimes pull over. Like, I live on this street and there's this giant hill and sometimes they go, okay, uh, we're going to drop you off right at the top of this giant hill. And I'm like, really? Why? My apartment's down there. You could go in front of my apartment and pull over there, but instead you have to go up this giant hill. Or even worse, it'll go down the giant hill and pull over there. It'll say, looking for a safe spot to pull over. And then I got to walk up this giant hill. So Tesla, in my experience, actually just pulls over at the destination. So maybe you could argue like Waymo's handling is actually more sophisticated in that it's kind of like going around to find a spot a little more. But um, I like the way it works with Tesla right now in that it actually goes to where I want today. Um, have you used the, like on Waymo, the, like you can adjust map drop point and then pick like the precise location? Uh, are you talking even after selecting that or have you not tried that feature? No, I have tried that feature and um, it does help with the pickup sometimes, but then for the drop off, sometimes it still wants to go up or down the hill for some weird reason. So, I mean, these are like, this is one of my biggest complaints with Waymo is it can't always get exactly to where you are to pick you up and it can't always get exactly to where you need to go to drop off. So there is a little bit of walking before and after. And that like, you know, so if I'm in Union Square or something, it can be really difficult for it to get into Union Square. I might have to walk a couple blocks away to to grab one more easily. Yeah, that, that's like a feature that Tesla will have that Waymo and others can't, which is, or at least as they're designed so far, can't, which is that the car could come to you it could drive you where you want to go. And then for the last few minutes of it, you could just take over and drive to the exact spot or wherever it's having difficulty with. And then you could just get out and it would just go away. So, I mean, I think there's a slightly different market for that because there's many, many people who take uh, taxis and other forms of uh, like Uber transportation and are not intoxicated and can drive, but they don't want to deal with parking. Yeah, I think this is, going to be just from a consumer perspective really huge so you've got an fsd version now that's actually smooth and human-like it you know it still has a little bit of rough edges right now as i've said it has more safety critical disengagements we'll see how future builds go but what we're really sort of starting to scratch the surface here of this year is you get in the tesla or first you know you you get your phone out you smart summon the car, it pulls out of the spot and comes to you. You get in, punch in the destination, or maybe you punched in the destination on your phone. You turn on FST, it drives you to the destination, and it pulls over into a parking spot or it parks in a parking spot. And then you get out, you do whatever you need to do, and then you call it from your phone again. So you could literally get around all day, theoretically, without driving at all. Just using your phone, telling it where you want to go, pushing the button on the wheel to turn on autopilot and that's it. So this is just unheard of in the car market. And honestly, it's just been super encouraging seeing my roommate get his model Y and he used the referral code. So he got the three free months of FST. So we go pick up the car 
FSD is just pre-installed on it. The moment we walk into the car for the first time, FSD. And of course, the cameras had to calibrate. But he hasn't been driving in a while. And so he's been using the FSD. He's been using it for about 70% of his miles. It's pretty crazy. And I asked him, well, okay, if we're not able to get another referral for three more free months of FSD and you have to pay for it, would you pay 200? And he said, oh yeah, absolutely. Like this is just a game changer on long drives and rain. And, you know, he's not an early adopter. He's not a tech person. And he's really liking version 11, even in the rain and everything. It's been raining like crazy. He's like, oh yeah, this is great. And he said, oh my God, it's such a different experience in the driver's seat. When I was in the passenger seat with you, it was a little bit scary, but with me in control in the driver's seat, I love this. I see why you're so crazy about it now. So it really is sort of crossing that threshold where it just comes on your Tesla. If you use the referral code, you get three free months of FSD and you can just try it and consumers are liking it. With version 12, I mean, people are just gonna be blown away if they get the new Model 3, the new Model Y, the Cybertruck, and they try this. They're literally not going to believe what they're seeing with the car being able to complete a full drive from them, parking spot to parking spot, without them driving at all. I did drive down to Los Angeles yesterday. I'm here in Los Angeles now. It's still California, but very different uh, road topography than San Francisco. I haven't driven today because it's still raining so much, but um, I think me and my dad uh, are going to go for a V12 drive. He's been really wanting to see V12. So we'll see how it performs in LA and in the rain and have another data point in uh, how it does outside the Bay Area. Are you going to uh, let it drive all the way down to LA? I'm in LA already. So it drove down yesterday and um, it did pretty well despite there being some insane storms. So uh, that's like a five hour drive, six hour drive? Yeah, six hours. And how would you say it performed in terms of, I'm, I'm going to ignore when it throws up the red hands, but like outside of when it throws up the red hands, how many interrupts would you say there were? Zero. There were speed adjustments, there were wiper adjustments, no takeovers.